Hi, now we're going to carry on with financial maths, moving on to higher purchase agreements. First, we need to talk about what higher purchase agreements are. When somebody needs something but doesn't have enough money to pay for it at the time, then they may have the option of buying it on a higher purchase agreement. A higher purchase agreement is a credit agreement between the customer and the shop, where because the customer isn't able to pay for the item up front, they agree to pay for it in monthly installments. They will often be expected to pay a cash deposit and then they will be charged interest on the balance. While they're paying it off, the customer is allowed to take that item home and they're allowed to use it, but the item doesn't belong to them until they've actually finished paying it off. They are basically just hiring it. And if they default on any payments, the shop can repossess that item in spite of the fact that they have already paid part of the cost of it, the, the shop can repossess it because it still belongs to the shop unless they actually have finished paying it off. When they make that final payment, then that item belongs to them. Now let's have a look at all the things that are involved in working, out, working with high purchase agreements. First we have the cash price. The cash price is the price that is listed or that is on the price tag of the item when you go to the shop. That is the amount that somebody would pay if they had enough money to pay for it upfront. That is the amount that they would pay. Okay. Then you've got the deposit. The deposit is generally, not always, but generally a percentage of the cash price. Okay. Next we have the principal loan amount. The principal loan amount is what is left over after they have paid the deposit, the amount that they still owe. So obviously they're not borrowing what they've already paid, so they're not borrowing the, the deposit amount. They don't owe the shop that anymore because they've already paid it. So now what is left over is the balance. So to work the principal loan amount out, we take the cash price and we subtract the deposit. And that's how we get the principal loan amount. That is the total amount that they owe once they have finished paying off that, paying that deposit. Okay, then we have the number of months. Now, because a higher purchase agreement is working with monthly payments, it's important to know the number of months because we have to find out how much they have to pay each month. So we need to know how many months they are all together. Now, sometimes the time will be given to you in years, in which case you need to multiply by 12 to work out the number of months. If you have been given the time in months, you'll have to divide by, by 12 to work out the number of years. And you will need to know the number of years when you're working out the interest that they will have to pay. Okay, and that is the next thing that we have is the interest. So the interest is calculated on the principal loan amount. In other words, this amount over here that they still owe. After they paid the deposit, they still owe this amount. We're going to work out the interest on that amount. Okay, and then we are going to find our accumulated loan amount. This is the amount that they owe after we work out the interest. So they've already paid the deposit, so they don't owe that anymore. So this is the principal loan amount plus the interest. Okay, so that is our accumulated loan amount. That is the total amount that they still have to pay off. And then we have got the monthly payments. or the monthly installments, and those we work out by taking this accumulated loan amount, the total amount that they owe, with the interest added, and we divide that by the number of months. So that will help us to work out the number or the amount that they have to pay every month. And then we have the total cost. There are two ways of working out the total cost. The total cost is the total amount that this item cost the customer once they have finished paying it off. So it's the deposit 
plus it is the accumulated loan amount which is the amount that they still owed plus the interest okay you can also work it out by taking the cash price and adding the interest to it because the interest is the extra that they have to pay because they're paying it off so there are two ways of working that out they'll both get you the same place because they ba they both are actually made up of the same thing you've got the deposit and then you've got the accumulated loan amount which is made up of the principal loan amount and the interest and over here the cash price is made up of the deposit and the principal loan amount and then you're adding the interest so in both methods you are adding the deposit the principal loan amount and the interest so you there are, there's actually another way of doing it as well you could add all three of those together as well okay so that is how you work out the total cost now let's have a look at an example where we're actually going to do all of this so in this example Sandile needs a fridge. He sees one advertised for 4,000 Rand but doesn't have enough money to pay for it. There is an option of buying it on a higher purchase agreement. He will need to pay a 10% deposit and then pay the balance off over 36 months at 15% per annum simple interest. Calculate his monthly installments. Okay, so let's have a look at how we're going to do this. So first of all, what we have to do is we have to work out the monthly installments. Okay, now in order to work out the monthly installments, Remember, to work out the monthly installments over here, we had to take the accumulated loan amount and divide it by the number of months. That means we need to know the accumulated loan amount. The accumulated loan amount, we need to work out the principal loan and add the interest, which means that we need to know the principal loan and we need to know the interest. So to work out the principal loan amount, we are going to take the cash price and subtract the deposit, which means we need to know the deposit. Okay, so let's first work out the deposit. That's the very first thing that we're going to work out is the deposit. Okay, so the deposit, they told us that the cash price is 4,000 um, and he will need to pay a 10% deposit, which means that he's going to pay 10% of 4,000 as the deposit. So 4,000 times 0.1 for 10%. And that gives us 400 Rand. So that is the total amount that he's going to pay for the deposit. Okay. So that means that in order for him to actually take that fridge out of the shop, he has to first pay 400 Rand. That means he's not borrowing that 400 Rand. He still, he doesn't still owe the shop that 400 Rand. He's paid it. Okay. So now let's work out how much he still owes the shop. That is our principal loan amount. Okay, and that is going to be the cash price of 4,000 minus the amount that he's already paid, which is 400. And that gives us 3,600. Okay, so now we know how much he paid for a deposit, and now we know how much he still owes, which is the 3,600. Okay, now we need to go and work out how much interest he's going to have to pay. But in order to work out how much interest he's going to have to pay, we have to work out how many years he's going to be paying it off because to work out interest we need to know the number of years okay so number of years they told us that this was going to he's going to pay it off over 36 months so it's going to be 36 divided by 12 and that gives us three years now you don't actually have to show this part of the calculation when you're doing this you don't have to show the way that you work out the number of years that's that's something that you're expected to just know how to do anyway so you can just go straight to using the three years and that's fine okay so now we're going to work out the interest the reason we need to work out the interest is because in order to work out the the monthly installments we need to know the accumulated loan amount now at the moment we know the principal loan amount but the accumulated loan amount is the principal loan plus the interest so I now need to work out my interest okay so the interest we work out by taking the loan amount, which is the, the 3,600 over here, and multiplying that by the interest rate, which is 15% per annum, so that's 0 0.15. And then this is for three years. So we multiply that by three, because remember, when we're working out interest, this helps us to work out the interest for one year. And because it's three years, we multiply it by three, because this is simple interest. Okay, so I've got 3,600 times 0 0.15 times 3 
and that gives us 1620 so that is how much extra he's going to pay because he can't pay for this fridge up front he's going to pay an extra 1620 okay so now we can work out our accumulated loan amount by taking the principal loan amount the amount that he still owed and adding the interest so that's 3600 plus 1620 and that gives us 4000 5000 220 okay now we need to go and work out our monthly installments And to work out the monthly installments, we're going to take the accumulated loan amount, which is the 5,220, and divide that by the number of months, which is 36. And that gives us 145 Rand. So that is how much he will have to pay every month for the next 36 months and and he won't own this fridge until he has made that last payment. Okay, so now I'm going to give you an activity that you're going to work on yourself. Okay, so in this one, we've got Jessica who buys a new laptop and a higher purchase agreement. The cash price of the laptop is 15,000 Rand. She has to pay a 15% a fifteen deposit and will then need to pay the balance off over a five-year period in monthly installments at 12% per annum simple interest. The first thing you're going to work out is you need to calculate how much interest Jessica will need to pay over the five years. So you've been given this question in stages. Okay, the first thing they're asking you to do is find out how much interest she needs to pay over the five years. So I'm going to give you two minutes to work that out. Okay, you should hopefully be done with that by now. So let's go through that example. So question A, we had to work out how much interest Jessica will need to pay over the five years. So in order to work that out, the first thing we need to do is we need to work out the deposit that she has to pay right in the beginning. So we know that the cash price is 15,000. So the deposit is going to be the percentage of that 15,000 rand. So she has to pay a 15% deposit. So it's 15,000 times 0 0.15 and that gives you 2250 rand 
Okay. Now that we know the deposit, we can work out the principal loan amount. Which is the amount that she still owes. So the amount that she still owes by subtracting the cash price and the deposit gives you 12,750. 12, okay, so that's how much money she still has to pay off, which means that that is what she's going to be charged interest on. Okay, so that to work out our interest, we are going to take the 12,750 and we're going to multiply that by the interest rate, which is 12%, so 0 0.12. And we're going to multiply that by the number of years that she's paying it off, which is five years. Okay, so we have 12,750 times 0 0.12 times 5. And that gives you 7,650 Rand. Okay, so that is the total amount of interest that she's going to have to pay. Right, now let's have a look at the second part of this question. Now you need to calculate her monthly payments. And I'm going to give you two minutes again to work this one out. Okay, you should be done with that by now, so let's go through question B. So for question B, we're working out her monthly payments. So now we already know the interest, we know the principal loan amount, so we need to first work out the accumulated loan amount. Because the monthly payments are worked out based on the accumulated loan amount by taking the principal loan amount, the amount that she owed after she paid the deposit, and adding the interest. Okay, so that's going to be 12,750 plus 7,650. And that gives you 20,400. So that is the total amount that she's going to have to pay off over the five years. Now we need to know, in order to work out the monthly installments, we have to work out how many months there are altogether. So we know that there are five years, so the number of months is going to be five multiplied by 12. Now, like I said, you don't actually have to show the step. You could have gone straight away and just used five times 12, which is 60. 
okay and then we're going to go and calculate what the monthly payments are by taking the total amount that she has to pay which is the 20,400 which is the amount that she didn't pay yet after she paid the deposit that's how much she had left over plus the interest okay so it's the 20,400 divided by the number of months that she's going to be paying off which is 60. So you take that and divide by 60 and that gives you 340 rand. So that is how much she's going to have to pay every month for the next 60 months for the next five years. Okay and then the last thing you're going to do for this question is you need to calculate how much the laptop will cost her all together. And I'm just going to give you one minute to work on this one. Okay, you should be done with that. So let's go through that last question. So for question C, like I said, when you're working out the total cost, there are, there's more than one way of actually doing it. Okay, so you can either take the deposit, which is what she paid right in the beginning, which is 2,250, and add the total amount that she paid over the 60 months, which is the 20,400. And that will give you 22,650. So in this one, I did the deposit plus the accumulated loan amount. I could also have worked it out by saying the, um, the cash price, which was 15,000 plus the interest, which was 7,650. So if I do that, 15,000 plus 7,650, you see that you get exactly the same answer, 22,650. So either method will work. You can take the deposit and add the total amount that they pay off over the, six, over the, the time period. In this case, it was 60 months. Or you can take the cash price and add the interest that they get that gets added on because they're paying it off over the 60 months. Okay, so that is how we work with higher purchase agreements in financial maths. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.